Okay, so I'm just waiting on my jingle to come. <laughs> but in the absence of my jingle, I have to do it myself. So welcome to another edition of the Weekly Featured Business. And your host is James Moffat, me. And the co-host is Johan Frazen. Hello. And, well, and Ida also, I guess. Yeah. So without further ado, I'll introduce our guest, our 16th guest, I think it is, without checking back. 16th, I think you are. Yes, yeah, 16th guest. Right. You get a special prize for being 16th. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, our guest is Emily. Hi, everyone. Hornsby. I, I, you have to help me pronounce this. Hornsby Martinez. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to tell us about the name and, and how it's kind of where it originates from. Sure. Yes. Okay. So anyway, everybody knows kind of the format on, and how this is done. So I'm not going to go through all of that. Uh, so before we get started and learning about your business, Emily, we want to know a bit about you. So where you're originally from, how you ended up where you are now, and you have to tell people where you are because the they don't know that either. So okay. where you are, how long have you been here? What kind of brought you to where you're living? And a bit of background about you personally before we jump into the business side. Okay. So hi everyone, I'm Emily. So I'm originally from England, London, Northwest London. Uh, my mum is English and my dad is Spanish, hence why my name is Martinez. Um, although, as you can see, I don't look very Spanish at all. I look completely English. <laughs> anyway, um, so I moved over here. When I say here, I'm in Switzerland, specifically Lausanne. Uh, I moved over here in 2013. I trained as a teacher in the UK. No, I did a degree in music and then I did a postgraduate degree in teaching and started my career as a teacher. Um, but I had a boyfriend at the time who got moved over here. So I followed him out being a wonderful girlfriend. Unfortunately, that didn't last, but I fell in love with Switzerland. Therefore, I stayed out here. I've been here for seven years now. And um, um, so two years ago, I went completely... Um, Mad? <laughs> potentially, we could <laughs> Um, I went completely sort of unemployed, we could say. Um, I can't say independent because I'm not technically independent, but yes, I started my business and it became a full-time venture two years ago. And, uh, and here we are. Is that enough about me or do you want to know even more about me? <laughs> no, so you're not married and you don't have children. No. <laughs> uh, and you don't have any other family members living here? No. But you do have a brother. I have a brother who I'm very good friends with. I mean, yes. <laughs> he has hopefully come out here, I'm hoping, at some point. But at the moment, he's back in the UK. Yes. But you do do things together. We do. We teamed up recently to do um, a business and entrepreneurship camp together because he has the business mind. I have the creative mind. So we make quite a good team. So how is life, just on living in Switzerland, so how is life for you kind of on your own living in Switzerland? Um, I love it. I mean, I, I hadn't lived alone. I'd never lived alone, actually, until I was 26 years old. Um, and it's great. I don't think I want to ever live with anyone ever again. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it's, it's fine. You know, with, with technology, I get to talk to my family pretty much every day. We WhatsApp or we call. Um, and I've got a few friends out here now. So, yeah, I'm very happy here. Right. So, so just before we go into your business, uh, because we, we have obviously a nest here as well, with Johan and Ida. But then I want to know, I, I can't remember actually, you have to lighten us, how you came to join Ant Nest. And what are, kind of what are your expectations of being in Ennest? And maybe anything, Johan, you want to add as well. So, um, Emily, how, how did you join? Did... Um, so I was part of a Facebook group 
your Facebook group. Oh yes, that oh, was it. Oh, that's why. Yeah. And then I saw a message in the Facebook group one day saying, "Come here to Entness." So I did. <laughs> <laughs> it was as simple as that, really. I followed the instructions, and uh, here I am. <laughs> All right. So you're not just a good teacher; you're a good listener as well. I'm a good listener. Yeah, I'm a very good listener. <laughs> So now that you're over here, I mean, everything maybe uh, Johan will emphasize is about kind of participation. Otherwise you could just join a group and sit in the background and I wonder why you're here. So we try to encourage people through events like, like this because then you get a bit more exposure. Actually, everybody that I've met has been normally because of an event of some sort that I participated in or actually hosted. And then if it's good, then people want to come back and, and, and see more. So it's all about other people doing things like this. It's not just about me or a select few. If you have a program or something that you want to do, then you can also share and, and do it in Entnest. So when we come on to about your businesses or the different things that you do, then maybe this is a good place also to, to promote that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's really the intent of Entnest also. And I think it's very convenient and appropriate, the events that you're doing, James, with small and intimate, so we all can feel that, uh, yeah, we can easily chime in and get to know the person who is the guest this time. And uh, great to get to know you, Emily, and uh, I'm sure that we will have great opportunities of uh, doing even more together with creating mutual value. And it's all about value creation, right, for every entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. You have to understand uh, what uh, purpose you're fulfilling for your potential clients and, and trying to drive forward with that. And the more we interact, uh, human interaction is so important, right? And we have to uh, not just, as, as James said, not just joining, but actually participating and contributing, right? So that's, that's what this is about. And this is uh, very, very well done, I think, by, by James. So very good. And we're very happy to have you. And I'm sure that there will be a lot of people, Emily, that uh, we can connect you with and we can get you a little bit further exposure, of course, for your business, which we want to understand a little bit more of now, I think. Yeah. So we've just got Sheila joining. So Sheila's originally from New York. Or, or maybe further back, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, but now living in London. So maybe Leonor, you might not be too far from each other. And, and she was a yeah. guest speaker when she, when she appears. Uh, she does all about dream deciphering. Uh, this we, we try to keep this very diverse in the way that we want. We don't want all people to be kind of the, the same in their business. We want them to be kind of different businesses and. Yeah, so much more interesting. Yeah. And, and we have had quite a diverse range of people. So all unique. So this is I mean, just look at this group here, right? I mean, we're, we're all quite different. And I think uh, if you would talk with each of us individually, I think you would find that we would all be quite different in terms of style and uh, uh, what interests we have, what we're passionate about doing and how far we've come on our individual entrepreneurship journey and so on. And that's exactly what it is about, finding out a little bit more details behind and, and how can we assist each other. Because as I always say, a rising tide will lift all the boats, right? And we are the entrepreneurs standing in the mud that needs to get in the boats and have the tide lift us. And we can do it by working together. So, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Anyway, so back to Emily. So, Emily, you, you kind of alluded about music and stuff. And, and with your background, I mean, you studied in, in the UK, in London. And you, I mean, just looking at your profile here, I mean, you do teaching, singing, music, and a whole bunch of other things. So this all started basically, you, you, did you just find that that was a natural talent when you were at school? Or was it something you kind of pushed into and you thought, well, I'm, I'm going to try and make something from that? Was it a family member that was a musician or artist in some degree that you thought, I want to follow their footsteps? or? How did that well, come It started, my grandparents um, got me piano lessons, bought me piano lessons. And I used to put on little shows, like drama shows for my grandparents and singing shows. 
And uh, one of my cousins noticed that I could sing in tune when I was younger. So mm. she suggested I had singing lessons as well. So um, I got singing lessons and piano lessons when I was really young, around like seven. Um, when I was about 10 when I did singing. Um, and it's just been a passion ever since. Um, I mean, my, my dad's family, so my Spanish side, I don't know them well at all, but they're all singers and dancers, like flamenco, Spanish singers and dancers, guitarists. Um, so I guess there's something in my blood, <laughs> um, musically wise. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's the only thing really that I liked at school. I only really liked music and art and drama <laughs> and languages to some extent. Um, and yeah, and now I just, yeah, I love music. It's my hobby. So instead of meditation, I just sit for hours and hours just singing to myself with the piano, playing the piano and singing, or I'm also learning the saxophone at the moment and the wow. guitar and the violin a little bit, but my main instruments are piano and singing for sure. Wow. Hi, Sheila. Hello. How are you? Marvellous. So Sheila's actually a singer. Um, we talked about that last, last time. So we, we've, got yeah, another, uh, we've got another artist with Emily. So Emily's our yes. guest. And she's just telling us about kind of her music background and how she got into that. I think Sheila mentioned yes. percussion to you, right? Yeah. Um, I grew up listening and playing percussion when I was did martial arts. I did uh, for 17 years and um, I played percussion because it was capoeira, which uses, follows rhythm. So yeah, percussion is a big part of my life and it's a big part of everybody's life. The first, the first instrument we hear is a heartbeat when we start life. So we've been bathed in percussion from birth. <laughs> yeah. So if you've got a dream about music, then Sheila will also help you decipher that. Maybe you're meant to be a musician or an artist or something. So, so anyway, so Emily, you, you've actually lots of different types of music. So I see in your profile, I mean, uh, history of American music, uh, Western music, uh, film music, African drumming, pub, uh, pop, pop culture, uh, pop culture, all sorts of stuff. And music therapy. What is music therapy? So all these ones listed on my profile, which to be honest, I didn't even remember was up there. Oh my goodness. Um, these are all modules that I took at university. So if I'm honest now, it was so long ago, I don't particularly remember so much about all of them. Um, they were all great <laughs> at university. Um, music therapy I found very interesting. Uh, I've n I haven't gone into it. I didn't take it any further. Um, but it's, you know, taking someone who... I think we watched a case study of someone with autism and they they got to when they sp or someone had difficulty speaking or something like this and they had to while they spoke they got to play a drum to try and help them get the words out and yeah it's about using music as a way to um sort of help like help people's symptoms um yeah this kind of thing Okay. I found it really interesting, but I mean, I didn't pursue it as a career, so. Okay, Let, let's switch now to kind of the business that you are doing. Okay. Uh, I mean, you have a website and stuff that people can also follow up and have a look at on, and some great videos in there. So if you want to learn more about you. So hi, Paul. So <laughs> Paul's in South Africa. So we've got international audience here. So Emily, tell us about be creative and how did that come about okay so be creative spelt with two e's for the b my logo is a little b um i do um a, a few different um there are a few different stems we can say uh, so i do piano and singing teaching as one part and then there's another part where i do themed birthday parties so it could be like an arts and crafts themed birthday party or um, a pamper party, or pop stars party, or a science party, or it could be anything. And so the children tell me what theme they want. And then they also tell me, for example, uh, I have lots of animal themed arts and crafts parties. So they'll tell me their favorite animal. Um, and uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna share my screen just so people can actually f see what you do. Right. Okay. So if you can see the website here. So be creative with two E's because it's B. And then basically all the activities that Emily does 
with, with kids, I mean, around, I mean, what it says here is help students unlock their potential in order to become more creative, confident and talented. So I, I think, I mean, this is definitely something that's missing and yeah, a, a great thing. But, it's yeah. definitely, yeah, everything I do is, is, is great. So, so just carry on talking while I, I, I just run this video so people can actually see okay. that in the background and then I'll switch it off. So okay. this gives people a kind of a, a feel for what you do. So you do this in your hometown at the moment? In um, No, so I'm based in Lausanne, but I do um, so the, the, the teaching, the piano and singing teaching. I go into international schools or people come to me or I go to them. So it's anywhere. Um, then the holiday camp, the birthday parties, I go to the client's house normally um, or they rent out somewhere. So again, it's anywhere. Um, holiday camps, I rent um, venues. So at the moment, I've done one in Vevey. Um, that was quite a while ago. Normally, I do them in Aubonne or saint -Pré, And then hopefully this October, I'll be doing one in Lausanne for the first time. And uh, then my after school clubs, for the moment, I, I do them through an international school. So I rent a space in an international school in Aubonne and um, I do my after school clubs there. Okay, so during the kind of the COVID-19 crisis, um, which I guess we're still in, uh, how has that affected your business? Um, it, yeah, that was, it was quite difficult, to be honest, because um, all the schools closed. Um, so obviously everything stopped, uh, clubs stopped, camps had to be canceled. Um, I did manage to teach online uh, with some of my students for the piano and the singing. So that I could kind of keep somewhat. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been six months so far of, uh, I mean, a lot less work for sure. But now we seem to be going slowly back to normal. So fingers crossed it continues that way. And yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so, so with the business, I mean, you don't do this alone. You do it with uh, a number of other people just to, to kind of help out as and when needed. Yeah, so um, I always have someone with me if I do a birthday party um, or holiday camp, they come with me. And then after school clubs, it depends how many children I have in the, in the club as to whether I take someone with me there. Um, yeah. And this is all done in English? All in English, yeah. So I mean, with a couple of exceptions, yeah, it's pretty right. much. But you do speak some French? I do speak French. I have a, I have a, few, oh. I have a few students who don't speak English, so then we speak French. Um, yeah. yeah. You, your home is after lessons, actually. French lessons. <laughs> yeah. Well, my French is not really existent, and uh, I'm, I, I'm, pr I'm a pretty old dog, so I'm not sure that I'm teachable even, frankly. But uh, let's see what we can do. Huh? <laughs> so you, you give music classes for kids as well, so you help like bring it out, kind of bring them out, I mean, help them, I mean, as you said, like kind of unlocking their potential. So this is also done through music. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of what I do is, is musical. Um, and I think the most important thing when you're teaching children is to make sure that they're enjoying what you're teaching and keeping them engaged and motivated. So although I was taught classically, both singing and piano, um, I don't tend to, I do sometimes do that. I do sometimes teach that way. Um, it would be my preference, but if we're honest, you know, a lot of kids, they just, it, they're not interested. So you have to, you gotta have a good balance. So I do a lot of sort of pop piano and um, yeah, just stuff to keep them motivated and interested in music. Cause I mean, that's the main goal really. And dancing. Oh, I mean, I like to dance, but I am not a dance teacher. <laughs> Disco queen. Uh, well, salsa. <laughs> so, so, oh, salsa. Very nice. So, typically, what are the age groups of the kids that you're you're doing this with? Um, so, this is something I love about it. I I have a massive range, which is so nice. Um, so, my youngest student is four, and my oldest, well, is an adult. So, uh, yeah, I get to change. I get to um, deal with just a complete range of all right so so when you say adults so what are you teaching them piano or singing oh wow okay so yeah. could anybody learn singing or or you have to 
having the natural talent or no no see everyone thinks oh i'm a bad singer i can never sing but it's it's just like an instrument you know you can't play no one can play the piano until they've had until they've been taught how to play the piano so some people yes have a naturally nice voice and that's great but you can learn how to sing I had a woman come to me who, I mean, really couldn't sing a note in tune. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was quite a challenge, I have to say, for both of us. But, um, you know, she improved. Uh, she left Switzerland now, but she, um, yeah, she, by the end, she could sing a lot more closely in tune. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I was just kind of amazed. I mean, I, I watched these programs like The Voice and stuff. And, yeah, I, I don't think I actually know many songs from end to end, all the words. Oh. Let alone, let alone kind of how to sing it. So, okay. I mean, to me, I would struggle with that. If I had to learn another song for the next week's competition, I couldn't do it. I couldn't learn the, the words. Let alone kind of the, the, the theme or the rhythm to it or, or whatever. So, My dad always used to say to me that he doesn't understand why I can learn all the, all the words to songs, but I don't learn like my history homework or my times tables or anything. I can't retain that, but song words, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Put it in a song. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. You, you could take me off on a, on a tangent there because I, I was studying Howard Gardner's Frames of Mind about the emotional intelligences. And mm -hmm. I, I, actually, he talks, he talks exactly about that. He, he says, you could be a mathematician or whatever, but you can't sing a note or you can't do sports. That's just not your thing. You're just not gifted in that. But to be gifted in something like music, it doesn't mean that you're also gifted in mathematics or whatever. But no, they you, say there's a correlation between maths and music. Maybe because... Oh, I, I don't... Yes. Well, it wasn't for me, but I mean... Uh, yeah. It didn't work for me. <laughs> yeah. I said, I mean, I think math language languages because i speak several languages and music yes um i learned by by sounds i mean it's uh, languages learned by listening um principally so to me it music is just another language um mm -hmm. that's that's expressed differently but um every language has its own pattern its own rhythm so I can see the correlation between music and languages, but math, I mean, yeah, because that, you know, that you have increments and tones and, you know, I studied music formally as well, but math never came into it as far as, <laughs> as, far as yeah, I think it's more the, the theoretical side of music is, I mean, you have to know your halves and your quarters, but yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah, I agree. Like music is the universal language, right? Of, of love, isn't it? Universal language of love. Oh, I mean, I, I was going to say just the universal language full stop, but potentially also of love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't that Italian? <laughs> I, I, I'm just reading some of the chat. I mean, Johan is saying uh, Beatles. I mean, I, I love the Beatles because it kind of covers lots of different generations and different types of music. And the Walters replying with a little help from my <laughs> endless friends. <laughs> ABC easy as one two three isn't that Michael Jackson? Yeah, yeah. the B, uh, yeah the Jackson, Jackson Five. Yeah, but yeah. you know it's funny because exactly. <laughs> I remember years ago meetings um, a young a, a young German guy when I was traveling around this was years ago um, and he learned English by listening to Bob Dylan and the Beatles because the English was so clear and distinct. Um, and that, that's not the first time I've heard that. I mean, some people have used Madonna, which I find kind of interesting, but <laughs> I've heard more people say that they've listened to Beatles music or Bob Dylan to, to be able to, re to learn how to speak English. So um, it, it's a medium for teaching as well. Um, and not just, not just the music itself, but the, the actual lyrics. Yeah. So I, with, with the kids, I mean, we sing a lot of Beatles songs because I, I like the Beatles. So, I mean, they know the words as much as I do. And my wife is actually terrible at words. We could be singing it every day and she'll still get the words wrong. So I, I thought I was bad, but, but anyway, some people I think are gifted at it. They, they could learn a song and, and learn all the lyrics. And yeah, I, it takes me a long time to do that. So anyway, so, we, you have a treat for us, Emily. I, I do. 
But before, before we go there, so you, you kind of do a number of things. So with your brother, I, I'm just interested in just before we, we have a special treat for the, the audience. So you do something about entrepreneurship as well. Yeah, um, so my brother and I, we created a camp on, a holiday camp, sorry, for um, a, called a business and entrepreneurship camp where we work on stuff like public speaking, um, teamwork, leadership. Um, he takes care of the, he did one on um, banking. I, I don't, that's him, that's his side. Um, <laughs> it also depends on the age group. We kind of chop and change depending on which age group's there. But we had, um, so we did a, a mini one. So from seven years old to 10, and they um, got to like make their own little uh, orange juice stand. Um, yeah, and they learned about so, sales and marketing. And yeah, you could maybe have a, a young entrepreneurial section within Entnest because Entnest is the home of the entrepreneur, but we think of entrepreneurs as adults. Yeah. But we, we don't think of them as kids and that's the time to kind of educate them. So yeah. maybe that could be something that's consider. a really good point, I think. I mean, entrepreneurship, clearly, we need to teach that to kids of uh, all ages nowadays. And I think it's, uh, it's very important to get that aspect of uh, life going forward, right, already in the school. So, yeah. And, and most of us have got kids say, who would want to do treat. something like that. Sorry, Paul. Um, yeah, just before, before the treat, I'm, I'm, I was just thinking... How, how do we take this business and scale it to the world? It's, yeah. um, a lot of businesses are what I would call lifestyle businesses. So they, 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 they create a lifestyle for the entrepreneur, but they're not scalable. So right. when that happens, you can't find investors and those, those kinds of things. You can't grow and become rich out of it. But I was just wondering if you have any ideas to internationalize your... your well... Your I mean, I, I, I was discussing with my brother about once we've established it well in Switzerland, to take it to other countries as well. But um, how? For a franchise, and how would you, how do you I mean, try to do that? Well, to start with, it would be me and him go like traveling. But that's a big limiting factor there. So I think yeah, yeah. also what Paul is uh, talking about there, the licensing and so on there, and that's also where, of course, Pete comes in. That's what uh, your bread and butter down there in the corner on my screen. <laughs> uh, if you haven't spoken yet, uh, Emily, to, to uh -huh. Pete, you definitely should. I think he has uh, yeah. great ideas and opportunities. And, and of course, Paul who brought it up. So yeah, really great opportunities. And this is what this is about, right? Yeah. Seeing, opening up and seeing 360, what and how can we create more value for each other, right? Or together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, right now, keep focusing on building got, a brand. Doing schools, well. Yeah, we lose that brand. Hello, brand. Sorry. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. We've I've, got some schools and ideas and stuff. And I was just wondering if you, if we could create a network of young people running similar schools where at least, at the very least, could learn from each other. But yeah. ultimately, maybe you can create like a central, a central brand piece. And then, and then have methodologies and stuff that are kind of protected in some way. Mm -hmm. so be creative, Switzerland. Be creative. Yeah. You know, South Africa. Be creative, exactly. USA. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I know we were talking previously, and and my wife works at the International School of Bern, so I mean they're English speaking, and and, and the kids are kind of hungry to want to aspire to doing bigger and great things. And, and, and the parents are spending a lot of money on them to kind of develop that. So, yeah, to do something in, in Switzerland, that at least if you targeted all the international schools, to do yeah. something that would be a program kind of outside or, or maybe blended in or whatever. Yeah. I, I think it's a good starting point to prove what you can do before you maybe venture out too big too quick. Yeah. And then prove that it works in Switzerland. I mean, if you look at international communities in other countries, I mean, it's in every country. So, yeah, where would you it, pick to go next? It's definitely a great thing to start very early in school and so on. It's, it's something that I think should be in the curriculums. And uh, for summer, I was up in Sweden and uh, 
um, there was a summer school and uh, there was a 13 year old guy who was uh, uh, interested in making jams uh, and uh, he uh, had the chance of getting into one of the big jam manufacturers and he created a completely new taste which uh, uh, he managed to to get prizes and awards for and it's now selling very good for that, that uh, company right so it's a great thing when you can test already at the age of 13 to to mm. really do something which can be very very so, powerful and, and 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 stimulating for them going forward so he's now jamming yeah exactly jamming <laughs> away that's for sure <laughs> I think, the hard, I think the most difficult thing is actually to get the parents on board because obviously everyone here is an entrepreneur so we can see the value in it but if you're not you know I think a lot of parents well I know a lot of parents were kind of thinking on the lines of well my child's eight or nine why do they need to learn about having their own business um, and you just get the one the the you know you just get the children whose parents are a bit more entrepreneurial or are entrepreneurs who actually see the value in what in what I yeah, yeah, but maybe no, the value offer. proposition needs to be right, of course. And it's a mm -hmm. critical element, no question about yeah. it, to be able to, uh, to, to convey that message in a good way. And, uh, but I do yeah. think entrepreneurship is the future of work. It's uh, no question about it. Uh, we can't rely on the multinationals or our governments to hire everybody. So I think we're, we're in a good spot here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could do something for the parents as well. So you say, well, if you've never experienced entrepreneurship, then why not at least have a flavor, a taster yeah. of it? Yeah. I um, had more inquiries from parents thinking that my course was for them, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Their> kids. <laughs> but it's also a great way for the parents and the kids to have something in common and do something together, right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that would be something. I think something. there's a, something there, Emily. Yeah. 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 If, the, if the parents are interested, yeah. there could be something for them and there could be something joint. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that, in fact, also a contact to keep in mind with uh, somebody who registered recently on, on NetNIS is Johannes, a guy from Austria. Yes, exactly. He's, and he started a group, uh, ISSA, and, and they are committed to, and they, they have clients in, in, in Far East, countries like China or uh, Singapore. And they, they want to, to basically bring children over to Europe to learn uh, the skills they, 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 they later in life need as let's say social skills but also I think business skills and the age group they, they, they cover uh, ranges from, from four or five years up to 22, 23 student age so it's not for the immediate branching yeah. out but something to keep in mind Yes, yeah. I mean between a lot of people even in, on this event now I mean, there's lots of skills that you could bring together. I mean, with entrepreneurship, I mean, I, I work with startups and SMEs and stuff like that. I, we also do kind of the pitching program. So if you wanted to pitch in front of us, but then that, that's also important like for, for kind of a program for kids as well. If they can pitch, then they get a kind of a taste for it. And yeah, stage presence and everything else. But anyway, I, enough about that. So, because you play music, and I'm sure everybody wants to hear something, don't you? Of course. Right. So then, Emily is going to play something for us. I have no idea. So this is very kind of on the spot, I put her. And, yeah, let's see what she's got. Remember, this has been recorded, so it could be used against you. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're ready, we, we, we should go and mute. So I'll go and mute as well. Just we don't want to disturb what you're doing. And then okay. when you're finished, just let us well we'll know. Are you are yeah. Thank you. 
Bravo, excellent, excellent. I know it's not so easy when you're on the spot and when you haven't got professional equipment recording you and everything, but I mean, it was fantastic. Really, really good, thank you. Beautiful, really beautiful. Thank right. you. So this is the point that, you know, or the time that we kind of open up to the audience, so although they have been interactive, that they can be more interactive now, so they can ask you questions, you can ask them. So just a, a, a little bit before we go there so kind of I, what are the main challenges that you're facing at the moment that you could do with some help with uh mainly my marketing ah oh, sorry one sec i'm about to lose my laptop it's balancing on three cushions right now <laughs> <laughs> sorry um yeah my marketing is really bad um it's really bad right. I, I yeah i'm very i'm, I'm not, it's it's that because i mean so for example, my holiday camps, my feedback from parents is, is always positive. Um, and I get students coming back to all my, you know, they sign up for all my clubs, all my camps, all my day activities. So I know my content is great, um, but it's hard. So right now the only students really that are coming to my events mainly are the ones that I know they're either my, my piano students or my singing students or in the school where I conduct my clubs. Um, and uh, yes, it's, it's, I guess the issue is getting known or having parents send their kids when they don't know me yet. Um, that's the issue I'm having. And I've tried Facebook marketing um, and I've tried free Facebook as well, like paid and free. Um, yeah, so. That's Have a look in Antnest. I think you're reaching out to a number of the ladies with kids, uh, for instance, would be an excellent opportunity. You're in Lausanne. Uh, I don't know if you know Melita Campbell. Yes, I do, yeah. Yeah? I'm sure that she would be an excellent uh, contributor and, and uh, stimulator for you to, uh, to, to be able to find and the, she's the, got the kids right time. Well. Yeah, she's got kids for sure. So, yeah. And, and there are plenty of others, uh, even uh, around you in, in the Lausanne area who have kids and so on there. So it should yeah. be very easy just uh, searching in Antnest and uh, maybe even setting up some group, uh, uh, depending on what it is that you want to do then specifically, if it is for the camps or for uh, kids in, yeah. I mean, you have so many different things going on, right? So. Yeah. Maybe you have to have different uh, elements and be specific in each of them rather than one big piece. But uh, yeah. Yeah. can you mention that something that you offer is, um, you especially when parents look for their children, uh, it's also a matter of trust, of, of, of you tr huge trust. And so word of mouth comes in. I think it plays an important role. That's, that's why the people who come to you or come back to you are of, of a very limited circle. Uh, so how uh, how do you use Google reviews on your website? Um, yeah, actually, I, I only had about six reviews on there until recently, and I, I'm adding more because I have so, I have like hundreds, which I haven't mm. really done enough with for sure. I need to. Um, but yeah, I mean, so some of the to be fair, like the birthday parties, I've never actually advertised them ever. Uh, it's only been word of mouth. I had one parent ask, would I do this? And then she told and then it's so yeah. So I haven't tried to advertise that one, but I mean, I would like to grow that a little bit more as well. Um, but yeah, the holiday camps are the main, the main ones that it would be great to, to grow. Yes, I, sh I, should, uh, I should put some more feedback on my website. Emily, how do you, are you leveraging or do you have a presence in Instagram and YouTube? Because it seems like the way you're describing what your business is, the Be Creative uh, particularly, um, it seems like you, you could take advantage of, of those two platforms. Are you taking advantage of them? Um, very badly, yeah. I, I did hire someone for a few months to start my Instagram and then, and then I haven't kept it up. 
because I, I yeah, I'm really bad with the technology stuff. So I, I, I can just about cope with Facebook. And even then my Facebook page is not really, it's not really great. So yeah, there's definitely more I can do with Instagram and YouTube. I have my own YouTube channel for singing, but I don't have, um, I don't have a be creative one actually yet. And that's also on my list of things to do. <laughs> yeah, I would suggest that because I think if you can uh, film bits of the events or have like someone to edit, it's short videos and it will bring up the trust and i think instagram works really well as well especially if you use instagram stories uh, where you show a bit of yourself so i know it's we, most likely we don't uh, most of the time we don't want to show much of ourselves but the more you do actually the more trust you build between the people who are viewing you and in your case it might work very well because you can see also you working with the kids and who you are showing that maybe Yes, that's very yeah, true, yeah. A lot of the time, I mean, I had to look at through your, kind of your website and, and, and other places that I could see a presence that you have. And you have the content. It's just that it's not going out necessarily to the right people. So having a website and, and videos, even that video that I showed, I mean, it's great. It, it shows what you're doing with the kids and everything. But if nobody ever sees it, nobody's yeah. going to know what you do. Yeah. So by having something that, that, that's the kind of the social proof. So you have to think that, well, if my audience are, are parents or mothers in particular or whatever it is, you have to define exactly who the ideal client is. And then you've got to think where they're going to hang out. So if it's in the La Lausanne area, where are they going to hang out? Is it going to be schools? Is it going to be on certain social media? Is it going to be, I don't know, down the pub or, or whatever? And that's where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And each of us, again, um, we're only one individual, right? And um, we're not expert on everything and we don't have time to do everything. So this is also why it's such a critical element to have the right people around you, right? Yeah. Um, so reaching out for, and there can be complementary elements around you. I mean, I don't know, a cake maker or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, some, yeah, I mean, uh, it's not my field uh, per se, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that there can be quite a lot of different complementary elements to to energizing and stimulating yeah. the kids and so on there. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, even in, in Endless, you could just do a search on type of people that would have the same audience and then think, right, well, why don't we buddy up or something? Or why don't we help exactly. each other promote? Or yeah. I mean, you can do things without having to spend money just by... Yeah buddying up with someone or yeah. asking advice most people give advice for yeah. nothing it depends if it's a training or just a bit of advice yeah. so yeah. maybe somebody who knows the good uh, internet skills and so uh, um, instagram skills in lausanne area who have kids and they uh, they get their kids into your program and they help you with your instagram accounts and whatever right yeah. Yeah. and another thing that i would I would look for some experts that have the business experience in doing marketing and stuff, but then maybe also some young people who have experience with Instagram, maybe content creation. I know one Finnish lady who's in Lausanne, she's still studying, but alongside that, she's really looking to get experience in creating content and she has her own YouTube channel, things like that. So maybe she could just do some photo shoots for you just to create some content so I can put you in touch with her. Maybe. Yeah, I also left you a link, a link yeah, on the chat. Sorry, I left you a link on the chat. It's a nice course and I think it's on sale. So it's very cheap to do now. Okay. Uh, it's just on uh, Instagram strategy for business growth. So you can check that out as well. Yeah. You might okay. even be able to turn it around if you have the older kids in your uh, classes there. They, you together with them can teach their parents how to, how to use Instagram or whatever if they're interested in getting more into um, becoming technically savvy, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's many, many things you can do. So, I mean, you can reach out to people here, connect with people after this and yeah, I mean, we can all probably give you some advice of some sort uh, that's going to be free and it just get you thinking. But then at the end of the day, it's your decision on how you want to move this forward and what you want to focus on. But because you do lots of different things, then there's potentially a different client audience for, I mean, kind of the entrepreneurial stuff uh, as opposed to the, kind of the music and, and things like that. So do you think I'm not really looking to to grow because it's me that needs to be there all the time, one to one. To be honest, I have I haven't I can't really take on any more students anyway. So it's definitely like the the 
yeah, the holiday caps, the birthday parties, the clubs. You need a clone. You need somebody who can be next to you, right? So, uh, again, I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's easy to find complementary people, I think, around. I think that would be an excellent opportunity for yeah, you. Maybe someone that's got kids that would yeah. help you out because their kids can then come and you give them a yeah. discount or whatever it is. Yeah, chat with Melita. She has a huge network of uh, female entrepreneurs and so on there also. And I think that could be really, really good. Leonor, if you want to add that link that you posted here in the Zoom, because when we close that, uh, this Zoom discussion, uh, maybe you can post it also in the Entnest uh, uh, chat for this event so that we can keep this. That would be excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so Emily. So have you got any questions for the audience? Um, oh, <laughs> um, I mean, I don't really know. I don't really know any of you yet. So I, I'm not sure. I don't, do you mean like specific questions for each person? No, just general. <laughs> oh, general questions, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I mean, I guess I could ask you guys like what would make you sign up to what would make a camp a holiday camp stand out one from another like why would you send your kids to my holiday camp and not someone else's holiday camp for example yeah. maybe I'll just go first because we have three kids and it's a kind of the school holidays again soon and it's never ending I mean and to, to try and entertain kids for three weeks while she's trying to work at the same time is not easy so if you could farm them out to kind of a, a camp and say, right, go to the camp, you have immense fun and value with other kids as well, then yeah, we would pay for that. So, But you prefer like a, a camp where they stay over, are you saying, rather than no, if even if you took them every day, you, you take them so they're away during the day, so like being at school, and then you pick them up again after and then not to stay over because that would be very problematic as well. As yeah. You take them in the morning and then you pick them up in the early evening and then you can drop them off and pick them up every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's a small commitment to know that you've got at least, I don't know, six or seven hours freedom that you can actually get on and do your job. I I'm think it's saying, a lot. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm not saying that you do it for the whole three weeks. You need to spend some time with your kids as well. But for one week, I think it, it is good for the kids and good for you. Yeah. We always have, we have two boys and they are a bit older now, 25 and 21. So maybe not uh, the right age, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it was, we always uh, sent them on different camps, uh, day camps, and uh, the, they were organized together with other uh, um, school friends and so on. So I think you have to be, uh, I, depending on who the kid are and what they're interested in, of course, they, you have to make sure that it's stimulating for the type of, of person, the kid that, that you're getting. And then hopefully somebody that else that they know is going there also. So that's also building on the referrals and, and uh, trying to bring in extra and so on there from that side. But uh, yeah, and then it depends on how big it is, if it's only you or if you have staff and so on there. Um, but um, yeah, I think yeah, there are really huge opportunities for a wide variety from tree climbing to football to cake making to painting and music and, and all kinds of things. And I'm sure there will be uh, interest areas for every kid of uh, every type, right? So. Mm -hmm. I yeah. could show them some yes, if you're skills. asking for a, for a unique selling point, um, you know, why would you send children to my and not to any, anyone else? So what, what's, the, what's the competition for summer camps in your area? Um, there, a lot of the international schools do summer camps. But I think that the, well, maybe I'm being biased, but I mean, the, the big international schools, they, their summer camps are very, because they're big, it's quite, uh, you know, you go and you have like multi-sports or multi-activity or, yeah, whereas my ones are very like, each activity is like really planned. And I mean, I'm very biased, but I put way much more time into my holiday camps planning them than into the big schools because it's in the big schools, it's very, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but it's, uh, it's like mass production in a way. 
Or is okay, mine so, very like specific? And so give you give just... give your child give a child a unique experience. That's 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 this sort of in in rough terms what you what you aim for, right? Yeah. But also personalized, I guess. It is yeah, very, yeah. Rather than just mass group, and then you're going to spend personal time with each kid. Yeah. So I think that's the way I can probably market my birthday parties because I go on, I don't just have like, I have kind of some, they're somewhat set, but every kid will give me their favorite character or whatever or animal. And then I create all the activities based on whatever it is they've asked me for. So there it's completely personalized. So that for sure is, um, yeah. but as I said, I haven't even advertised my birthday parties yet, but yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, the secret to, as I've been finding out for myself, is to, to be unique. Um, and if you offer a service that's, that's completely tailored um, and get in front of the right off, off audience that not only has the interest but has the money to pay you, then, um, and you're offering them a, a, a completely tailored service, what they want, um, you stand a very good chance of getting business, but you again, you have to be very specific and very narrowly focused on that audience. It took me several years to figure out who my ideal client was because what I do is so unusual. Um, but now that I have finally cracked that, um, everything that I produce with, in con terms of content is speaking to that person, to that, that avatar that I've created and and that's what you're going to have to do it's nice that oh you know da, 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 da. ain't gonna cut it you got to be very precise like laser like because a laser will go straight to the people that you want to 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 be in front of yeah. um and i think your idea of, of the these tailored parties that's your selling point your unique selling point that i give you what you want and yeah. everybody wants that. They want what they want. You know, I mean, and I can see this in some place like in, in California, where, you know, in a certain kind of uh, um, environment, people would pay up, pay you up the wazoo for that. Trust me. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so you, you've, got, you've got what you need. It's just a matter of packaging it right. Uh, or as to put it as P.T. Barnum once said, you can sell shit to Shinola, providing you package it right. Okay. <laughs> How many kids are usually coming to these birthday parties? Uh, well, the birthday parties, it depends on how many the parents invite. But my holiday camps, for example. So it's so up and down. I've had, I've had like, so my last camp had 15 kids. It was my Harry Potter themed camp. Okay. which is my, the fa my favorite I've ever done, to be honest. <laughs> I'd happily just do that one. But anyway, um, but then like the next camp only had five, which was my cooking camp. Um, before that, I had to cancel two of them in July because I only had about two kids in each one. So I canceled them. Okay, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a number, a manageable number. Do, do you know somebody who is very good at making little poems? Poems? Poems. I ask you that because I, I was at an event for adults, but I think children would love it, uh, where um, uh, I translate it into your case, where the parents are asked uh, to give you two or three keywords, what the children specifically like, or you know what their specific hobby, etc., is. And then if you, if you make a, a, a very little poem for every child, you know, they would love it and take it away and they get it in writing, you know, a nice little poem for every child. Okay. I mean, I, I always write poems in my parents' birthday cards, so <laughs> I can <There> probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, I, my next idea is to take the Harry Potter camp around Switzerland. So I'd like to go to Bern or Geneva or wherever, Zurich. But the thing is, I don't have, I don't know anyone there. You know, I, I know people here. I know clients here, but I have, I have zero contact at all in these different places. So then it's just a matter of how and where. Everybody, everybody knows Harry Potter. <laughs> Emily, are you, um, are you getting testimonials from the parents and from the children about what yeah, you're doing? Do. You have I done do. that. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, that's really going to be important to share in your marketing. So that's great that you've done that. I imagine you're having them sign kind of like releases that say basically you're not, you know, that you can record them, their likeness and that sort of thing. So that's great. You've gotten that business part done. Um, I, I wrote in a note, but I'd love to just do one-on-one -on -one with you and just kind of catch, uh, catch up a little bit more and talk about your brand. And, you know, if there's anything I can, I can lend, I would be happy to do that. Okay, cool. Thank you. That'd be great. So, Emily, right. I, as I mentioned before, and, and what we've seen, I mean, with the video, I mean, you have content. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is kind of top and tail it. You can kind of do an intro to that. Maybe you don't need the whole amount of it, but you can take, you've got the video, you can take out bits that you think are more relevant, particularly focused on, on the camp, summer camp or camp, or whatever, and, and then put an end to it as well. So then you've got a video because people want to visualize something. If you just have all a kind of text and, and an image, it's hard to actually visualize, well, well, what do I get? What does it look like? I mean, can I see what you've done with other kids? So you've got that content. You just need to yeah, wrap it up in a way that you can use it to promote. Yeah. And I think yeah. if the theme is then Harry Potter, then you've got something that's going to resonate with a lot of people straight away. So just yeah. by saying Harry Potter, you think, oh, yeah, I, I'm interested before you even know the program. Yeah. Well, I, well, my last camp, I took loads of footage and I'm just talking to someone now to see if he can put it into a video for me. But that camp was like the kids absolutely loved it. So I feel very yeah, confident. That would be perfect for a sizzle video. I, I agree with James. That would be a really important tool for you. Mm -hmm. But you have a, a video guy? Uh, yeah, I have a friend who does videos. So, yeah. All right, okay. I mean, I, That's know, great. I know one in Lausanne, actually. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, let um, me know. Yeah, I mean, he, you can check him out. I can give you a link to his YouTube channel. But I, I've used him as well, and he's, yeah, and mentored him as well. He's excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. no, send me that. That would be, be good to know. All right. Anyway, so we're, we're on the hour now, so you've, you've had your, yeah, Spotlight. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I'm interested in actually, Leonor, because, yeah, we haven't heard anything from you uh, as in what you do. So, I mean, if you want to be a featured guest, then you're more than welcome. Yes, thank you. I will at some point. Uh, not sure if I'm there yet. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely we'll, we'll take advantage of the opportunity. Okay. So, I mean, this is a, a great way to actually learn a bit more about you. So but before the call, people didn't really know anything about you and, and we couldn't help you because we didn't know. So now we know a bit more about you. At least people can, can connect. Thanks, Alvin. And, yeah, and then see how it goes. I mean, everyone is more than happy to give you some advice. What you do with that advice is entirely up to you. But then at least there's a kind of a starting point. If you want to explore and nest and think, could I do something in Entness? Then reach out to Ida or Johan. Uh, if you want to do something outside of that, then yeah, there's people here that, that can also help as well. Or at least give you some ideas and tips or point you in the right direction. And that doesn't have to cost anything. Right, so Emily, thank you very much for being our 16th guest. Thank you for letting me be your 16th. Yes. Uh, if we want to find you now, so people want to reach out, can you make, uh, in the event itself, can you put any links in there, a link to your website, links to where you want to point people? Because yeah. if people come across, like maybe someone that would be potentially interesting for you, then at least they can share, share the links and they can learn more about you. Did yeah. they recorded, so I, I do put it in, I will make it available and then you can do what you want with this as well. You can dissect it, chop out bits or, or use it to help promote as well. Okay. So thank you everybody for another Friday featured business. And we will have another guest next week. Yeah, I, need mystery guest. I need to check who it is. Uh, I, I don't want to mystery guest. give away the mystery guest yet. And because I need you to keep coming on here every week. So we, we normally have the, <laughs> the, the usual audience. Uh, it's good. And we, I don't think, apart from Leonor, I've never met anybody here personally. 
I mean, Johan, of course, but I mean, other, other than that, Music, yeah. nobody. But I feel connected with them all now only from doing things like this. So it's surprising what you can create a, a virtual environment and still have a relationship building without actually meeting people in person. So without further ado, we shall close the call. And I wish everybody a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to next Friday. And good luck, Emily, with whatever you do. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Emily. Thank Pleasure you, Emily. meeting you, Emily. Thank, Thank you. Well done, <laughs> good Thank to you. see everyone. Good weekend, guys. Thanks. I'm Thanks. jealous. My day is just starting. Yours is over. Okay. <laughs> good, good luck, luck Pete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>